locomotive power acquisitions of the Boston and Maine Railroad in the first two and a half decades of the 20th century reflected the philosophy common to most railroads, as much tonnage as possible in one train. With this thought in mind, the B&M acquired 251 280 consolidation types in the classes K5A to K8D from 1901 to 1916, and 30 2102 Santa Fe type locomotives in classes S1A and S1B in 1920 and 1923. These two types of locomotives would be the mainstay of drag freight service until 1928. Two massive M2A 0880s were also purchased from Alco and stationed at Mechanicville, New York in heavy hump and pusher service to further this argument that slow but powerful was the philosophy. The world of freight traffic, however, was changing. Customers were no longer satisfied with the slow service being offered, and time in transit could, and often did, mean money lost. There were now alternatives to the railroad, and many were looking at the fledgling interstate trucking industry in an attempt to gain this sought-after service. The railroads were not oblivious to this and sought help from the locomotive builders. The answer came from the least likely source, Lima Locomotive Works, the smallest of three major builders of the area, whose most notable product before 1925 was the Shea geared locomotive commonly used in logging operations. The answer came in the form of a 284 wheel arrangement type, with an 88 inch boiler, 60% limited cutoff, and extensive grate and ash pan that necessitated the four wheeled trailing truck. It was definitely different from anything else on the rails at that time. Numbered 1, and termed A1, this demonstrator unit was painted in Boston and Albany railroad garb and tested, commencing March 28, 1925, between Selkirk, New York and Springfield, Massachusetts. This route takes the Boston and Albany over the Berkshire Mountains, and such that name was selected for the Conqueror, the A1 Berkshire type. The A1 proved to be a success, demonstrating that freight could be carried at speeds previously unheard of. Though the A1 was never tried out on the Boston and Maine, their operations department and other officials kept track of the trials and were impressed with the results. Occasionally, the B&A engines wandered onto B&M rails when an accident or an act of God diverted traffic and the B&M was finally convinced. The Boston and Maine received 20 284s in May 1928. They were assigned the numbers 4000 to 4019 and given the class designation T1A. The following year, near duplicates 4020 to 4024 were delivered and designated T1B. Both classes were equipped with coffin feed water heaters mounted externally on the smoke box front rather than buried in the smoke box as would be the case on later locomotives ordered with this style of heater. This, of course, gave them their very distinctive and imposing look, shared by a few B&M 2102 Santa Fe types. With their rather cavernous appearance, these locomotives were either termed ugly or tough. There doesn't seem to be any middle ground here. You either liked them or you didn't. The T1As were originally built with 8-wheel, 12,000-gallon, 18-ton tenders. However, the last five, 4015 to 4019, were retrofitted by Baldwin in 1929 with 12-wheel, 17,500-gallon, 26-ton all-welded tenders. T1Bs were virtually identical to the T1As, except for the very obvious difference in tenders. They were, however, other differences, including larger sandboxes, separate check valves, and a cylinder casting that included the exhaust steam channel internally. A very big fly in the ointment, if you will, was the design of the frame. In order to build the locomotive with its huge grate and accompanying ash pan, it had been necessary to terminate the frame just aft of the rear driver. The rear of the boiler and firebox was essentially supported by the four-wheel trailing truck. As this support was itself mobile, the firebox was subject to strains not normally encountered by those more rigidly supported. 
Lima had tried to circumvent this problem with the use of rollers between the firebox and trailing truck, but this arrangement never really solved the problem. The draw head was also in the trailing truck. The locomotive was in actuality and articulated and suffered because of it. Backing a train on a curve or sag would often lead to the derailment of the trailing truck as side thrusts caused the truck to climb up over the rails. A second problem, compounded by the articulated frame, was that of slipperiness. The adhesion factor for classes T1A and T1B were 3.61 and 3.69 respectively, although 4.0 was desired. Cases of T's slipping to a stall were not unheard of. It is perhaps no wonder that the B&M never referred to the class as Berkshires, but rather Limas, or more likely, those damn Limas. The performance of these machines quite obviously had to be improved, necessitating an increase in the adhesion factor. To do so either meant decreasing steam pressure or cylinder size, and or increasing the weight on the drivers themselves. The final solution was to decrease cylinder size to 27 and a half inches and adjust the spring rigging to increase the weight on the drivers. Unfortunately, the design of the trailing truck limited this increase. It was impractical to apply equalizers between the front set of trailing truck wheels and the rear drivers. With a reduced cylinder size, some weight was transferred to the drivers, commencing with 4004 on March 29, 1930. The T1As were officially converted on March 1, 1932. The problem was not quite as acute with T1Bs, and they were not officially modified until November 1, 1942. These modifications altered the adhesion factor for both classes to 3.9, quite a bit closer to the 4.0 desired number. The T1As were assigned to the Fitchburg and Berkshire Division, hauling the symbol freight between Boston and Rotterdam Junction, New York. They were, however, excluded from the Eastern Route, the Western Route, and parts of the Southern Divisions until January 18, 1929, due to bridge weight limitations. As soon as the bridges had been strengthened, the speed limitations, which were imposed at the time of the lifting of the ban, were themselves lifted and the T's wandered over the entire system's mainline trackage. Due to their large size, they were seldom allowed on most branch lines. As the Second World War began winding down, pressure on East Coast railroads lessened. Quite the reverse was the case on West Coast railroads. Two of them, the Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe, were hard-pressed for motive power. Seventeen of the T1A classes were sold to these two railroads, ten to the Southern Pacific and the remaining to the Santa Fe. B&M engine crews and dispatchers probably breathed a sigh of relief to be rid of these troublesome machines. They became Class B1 on the Southern Pacific and were numbered 3500 to 3509, and 4193 to 4199 on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Upon their arrival on the Southern Pacific in early August 1945, they were assigned immediately to the Rio Grande Division, the only division where coal-burning locomotives were used. The Southern Pacific eventually converted all 10 to oil in 1949 and 1950. However, all were scrapped in 1950 and 1951. Their appearance was altered by the Southern Pacific with the removal of the coffin feed water heaters which had been a problem with the alkali-ridden water found on the Southern Pacific. Whaleback tenders were also substituted, along with other typical Southern Pacific aesthetic style choices. The Santa Fe's lot were painted Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe before leaving the Boston and Maine's Bill Ricca shops in July of 1945. They were also assigned to a division where coal-burning locomotives still held sway. The Santa Fe did go as far as rebuilding number 4197, former B&M 4003. The rebuild sported an Alesco feed water heater, a Santa Fe favorite, and there was little to indicate her original parentage. This turned out to be a one-of-a-kind rebuild as Santa Fe became heavily committed to diesels. It is thus that the 17 ended their careers some 3,000 or so miles from their previous home. They did outlive all but one of their sisters, number 4023, which was used on the Boston and Maine as a steam generator and snow melter until her final scrapping in 1955. Although they were troublesome during their time on the Boston and Maine, 
The T1284s are fondly remembered for their distinctive style and the heavy freight pulling capabilities they brought to a somewhat antiquated Boston and Maine Railroad in the 1920s. Today, rail fans and modelers favor the engines due to their unique aesthetic appearance, and they can be found operating on many HO scale layouts. No matter what you thought about them, you loved them, you hate them, you enjoyed their look or found them ugly. It's hard to argue that the B&M 284s were not an important part of the Boston and Maine Railroad in the interwar years and especially during the Second World War. They thundered along the rails of the Boston and Maine, hauling countless amounts of tonnage during the war years and before, and their deep, resounding whistles struck a note with any steam lovers. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss a new video. And head on over to our website, www.bmrrhs.org, where you can learn how to support our nonprofit organization, sign up to become a member, browse an extensive online archive of B&M materials, watch more programs, listen to our podcast, or browse our online store.